maybe. All right. So today we're just going to continue our discussion of looking at our little functions in that graphing slash um, vertex form. Um, we've been talking about like what HK and A does and kind of we started with those quadratics and kind of made the comment that with the quadratics if you um, understand how it works with the quadratics it works with all the other families of functions. So we even kind of went through those different families yesterday like on Desmos and kind of like messed around with it, right? So just kind of rehashing a little bit of some of that like information. So if we, um, when it came to our quadratic and it came to that vertex slash graphing form, We had that y equals a x minus h squared plus k, right? And now we're all pretty good at knowing what each one of those letters does, right? So our a, depending on if it was positive or negative, it could flip the entire function over the x-axis. Um, if a was greater than 1, it stretched it because we got there faster. And if it was, um, if A was greater than zero but less than one, it yep, it compressed it, good job, right? Because those are kind of like our fractions that are less than one, so we're only getting there half the time, so it takes us longer to get there, right? Um, our H was that horizontal shift, so that was moving it either left or right, right? And our K is our vertical shift, so that's either going to move it up or down. Yep, good job. Awesome, right? So the crazy thing is, is in, on this one, um, because we were talking about quadratics, that's where that square came in. So we knew it was going to give us, us that parabola and that U-shaped. So we can use this exact form, and then it just all depends on what variable, or sorry, what exponent we have is going to tell us what type of graph it is. So we can actually use this for um, lines, like a linear. Okay. And I'm just going to go to a new slide. Okay. So let's look at like a linear example, okay. which is going to give us a line. So for us, um, a lot of times we write it in that y equals mx plus b form, right? where our m is the slope and our b is our y-intercept. But if we go back to that little graphing form that we have, we can do the same thing and write our linear functions that way. So we would have um, y equals, and we just use a instead of m, right, when we came to the whole quadratic. And it kind of has the same concept, you know, your slope has to do with, if you think of just a regular line, if you have a line that has a slope that's greater than one, where your rise is faster than your run, it makes it like it's stretched out, right? If my slope was like one over eight, I'm only going up a little bit, but I'm running really far. So it almost gives me, it's like I'm pushing that line down almost to where it's horizontal, right? So that's kind of that compression, you're pushing it down and making it more flat. And then x minus h, whatever we do to h is going to move it left or right, and then plus k. So our k isn't going to necessarily be our y-intercept because if we were to look at this one, this would be like y equals m, right, x minus zero plus b, right? If we were to try and put it in that hk form to where our h is zero, and then that's telling us that b is our intercept because our x is zero. So this one, it works for any point. It doesn't have to be the y-intercept. And it works the exact same way, right? That a if it's positive or negative, it's going to tell us if it's flipped, right? If you think of a positive slope, if it put a negative on there, it just flips it over and makes it a negative slope. 
and then you either have that stretch or that compress because of the slope. Okay, stretch or compress. Then H is going to tell me wherever my line is, like how far to the left or how far to the right I'm going to move it. So it does the same thing on that left and right. And my K is going to tell me if I go up or down. Okay. So when it came to the parabola, remember that HK was the vertex, and that vertex is a point on the line, so or on the vert or it's a point on the graph. Well, when it comes to writing it in a linear, like a linear doesn't have a vertex, but guess what that HK is? It's still a point that's on the line somewhere, right? So. The HK that they give us or we're finding, I mean, that is a point on the line. So the nice part about using this form, I can sit there and say, you know, uh, write an equation. Of a line. Um, let's say that it goes. Um, that goes through the point seven negative eight and has a slope of, I don't know, uh, negative four. Just throw some positives and negatives in there, right? So before we kind of had this little graphing equation, whoops, stop moving, right? <laughs> Um, we got the slope and a point, so we would put it in that really nasty point slope form and then have to move stuff around and do all of that. Well, now that I know my graphing form, my y equals a x minus h plus k, my exponent is a 1 because I'm talking about a line, I can just plug this all in. So y equals, what do you think my a is going to be? Negative 4. Yep. X minus our H. What's our H? 7. Seven. Yep, look at this. Plus K. Negative 8, right? So just clean it up, right? Y equals negative 4. X minus 7 minus 8. And now you have an equation to the line. And then if you wanted to graph it, really nice and cheesy. Right? My point is 7, negative 8, so to the right 7, down negative 8, so somewhere down here. Right? Then I got a slope of negative 4, and I'm just going to go you know, up 4, back 1. And you could make a really cheap way.